Well, the U.S. Postal Service has long been a gateway to the middle class for many Americans, but the Postal Service is under extraordinary financial pressures. The post office reported a $5 billion loss in 2013, and the nation's nearly half million postal workers are feeling the pressure of cutback hours and layoffs. To save the post office, the Postmaster General wants to reform and downsize. Among his ideas, opening mail centers inside staple stores. The Postal Workers Union doesn't like it. Mark Dimenstein is the new president of the American Postal Workers Union. Mark, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thank it's, you, Craig. It's a pilot program that the Postal Service wants to put in place. This is what one postal worker on the union's YouTube page had to say about it. Take a listen. We don't think that, that Americans want uh, to trust their mail to corporate America. Um, it should be in the hands of trained postal employees who are sworn to uphold the sanctity of the mail. You're planning a national day of action on April 24th, as I understand That's it, to right. kill this plan. Why? Well, Craig, there are, there are three uh, obvious problems with the plan. One is these uh, staple postal units are not staffed with postal employees who are accountable to the people of this country. When people take their mail to Staples, the mail is not protected. It doesn't have sanctity of the mail. It doesn't have the privacy that you have when post offices are staffed with postal, postal employees under a code of conduct and well-trained. Secondly, it's a transfer of, of decent paying living wage jobs to non-living wage, non-benefited jobs. We talk about income inequality in this country and addressing that issue. You can't address it by taking good jobs and turning them over to low-wage jobs. And third, it's putting postal services, which belong to the people of this country, in the public uh, domain, in, 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 into private profit side of, of uh, stores like Staples. And what that does is it's going to lead to the decisions of who gets postal services, where they get it, and when they get it, as to whether an entity can, can uh, make a dollar. The Postal Service uh, did say in a statement in part, quote, the retail partner expansion program is not intended to replace any of the 33,000 traditional post offices or right. the valued employees that work in them. Rather, the program is an opportunity to grow the business and has never been an earmark to pave a way to privatization. Staples told us that, that as a matter of policy, it doesn't provide details on pilot programs or agreements with vendors. Here, here's the thing, Mark. We, we know that the post office cannot continue to exist the way that it does now. We can all agree on that. How then should we modernize it? How do we grow the post office so that it can compete against the likes of UPS and FedEx and its, its biggest competition, email? Well, let, 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 let me back up just, just one moment. The, the post office financial crisis is a manufactured crisis. It's manufactured by Congress and sure. law in, in uh, 2006. To a certain, so, extent, to a certain so, extent, that is true. To a certain right. extent, and, and the, Right. And the operating profit, the, the, uh, the, the, the post office had an operating profit both last year and so far this year. But in, in, in terms of your question, I think the way to grow the business is to enhance services, broaden services. There's no reason post offices can't be open later. There isn't, there's no reason, and, and we're for it. There's no reason that the postal services, that the postal service cannot provide basic banking to the people of this country. Millions and millions of people, of people are what they're, what's called unbanked. They are and at the mercy, of yeah. the, the, the mercy of payday loans. The Postal Service can provide notary services, licensing services. And, 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 and most of all is the package delivery system is exploding in this country. So if the Postal Service is allowed to, to, to do its job without the politicians looting its treasury, sticking it in the, in the federal treasury and saying, look, the Postal Service is broke, and therefore the people of this country have to turn it over to the private side and, and at the mercy of, of businesses like Staples, which, by the way, have, have just announced they're closing 225 stores. We should note that when, you, when you're talking about the, the financial viability of the post office, 
Um, when you talk about Congress looting its coffers, you're talking about the, the unfunded liabilities that, that are associated with uh, the post office being required, federally required, to you know, provide right. health benefits and, and pensions uh, far above and beyond uh, what, what most agencies or any other agency uh, That's right. would. So, That's right. Mark, Se see, go ahead. Se se 75 years out for workers that aren't even born yet. No, no agency, no business ever faces that kind of crushing burden. You were a mail clerk. My dad was a mail clerk, too. Where were you a mail clerk? I was, a, I was a mail clerk in Greensboro, North Carolina. My dad was in Columbia, South Carolina. How about that? Well, Good. well great, great. And if anybody wants to follow this uh, a fight with this, what we call a dirty and, and secret deal between Staples and the United States Postal Service, you can go to StopStaples.com. All right, Mark Demonstein, thank you so much. Do appreciate it. Thank you. you. Uh,